In this video, we're doing problem 6.1.5. We'll be finding the term structure for zero coupon bonds when we are given terms, coupon rates, and yields for what you might call ordinary bonds that actually have coupons. Kind of the opposite of what we've done in the last couple of videos where we were given the term structure and we wanted to think about valuing the bonds. Now we have to actually find the term structure, so it's kind of the opposite problem. So here's what we're given. We're given the following information for four bonds that do have coupons. All coupon and yield to maturity rates that you see here in these two columns are nominal annual and convertible twice per year, so you'd have to divide them by two to get the effective semi-annual rates. The goal ultimately, based on this information, is to find the associated term structure for zero coupon bonds, bonds that don't have any coupons, they only have a payment at the end, that have different maturities, maturities of one half year, one year, one and a half years, and two years. Your final answer is your quotations should be in nominal annual rates that are convertible twice per year, just like these rates that you see here. Okay? So it might seem a little unclear what to do here. It's really something where you have to go back to a fundamental definition that's in the book that I'm going to show you. But to start to get our mind around this at first, let's just draw what a number line here, timelines for these different four bonds to think about what's going on. And let's pretend to keep it simple that the redemption amount and the face value is one to keep the numbers small. We could pretend it's 100 or something like that. But just to keep the numbers small, I'll draw some number lines. So in this first one, um, you got time 0 and time 0 0.5. Um, it's a one-half-year ha bond. The coupon rate is 4% as a nominal annual rate, so 2% would be the effective annual, uh, semi-annual coupon rate. 2% of 1 would be 0 0.02, so that would be our coupon at time 0 0.05, but we'd also get our redemption amount, because it's maturing at, at time 0 0.5, of 1. So altogether we're getting 1.02 at time 0 0.5. What about the next one here? times 0, times 0 0.5, and time 1. This is a one-year bond. Coupon rate as a nominal annual rate is 6%, so as an effective semi-annual rate, it would be 3%. 3% of 1 is 0 0.033, so I'd get a coupon of 0 0.03 here, 0 0.03 here, and my redemption amount of 1. We're now on to the one-and-a-half-year bond. Coupon rate divided by 2 is 2% 2 per half year, so I'm getting 2% of 1 is 0 0.02. I'm getting those for the coupons, and I'm getting my redemption amount at time 1.5. And finally, the last one is a 2-year bond. You're going to get 4 coupon payments. That's 1.5 there. And the coupon rate as an effective semi-annual rate would be half of 8%. It would be 4%. So you get coupon payments of 0 0.04, four of those, and then your payment of 1 at the end. Okay, And then we can think about the equation of value and think about the corresponding. These are yield to maturities as nominal annual rates. You can divide these by 2, you get the effective semi-annual yields. We could think about an equation of value with that to think about the prices of these things. And we will actually do that. However, before we do that, we better understand what it means, then, to find the associated term structure for zero-coupon bonds. These are not zero-coupon bonds. I guess you could sort of think of the first one as being a, a zero-coupon bond if you sort of lump together the coupon with the redemption value. Um, what does that mean? Let's go to the book here, page 343 of Broberman's book, the seventh edition of the Mathematics of Investment and Credit. Um, so the algebraic description of the term structure and spot rates are as follows. So the term structure is a list of rates, they're called spot rates, that are rates or yields for zero coupon bonds. We consider zero coupon bonds maturing in T years. T for this problem is going to be first 0.5, then 1, then 1.5, then 2. Spot rate RT measured as an effective annual rate of interest. Actually, we will label ours as nominal annual rates of interest since that's where we want our answers in, and then dividing them by two will give us effective semi-annual rates. And the present value, you take that one plus the really effective rate to the negative t power here. t would be in years for this description, but for us it would be in half years. Any set of future cash flows can be now be valued using this term structure. Suppose you've got payments C1 through Cn, just like we have here with the 
uh, coupons and the uh, redemption value due at these different numbers of years, which will be 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and 2 for us. The total present values of the cash flows is given by this when you have the term structure. So we, what we want is we want the series of cash flows with respect to the term structure that we want to find to equal the present value that we get when we think about these yield to maturities for these individual bonds. Okay, so how does that work out in practice? So I'm going to write a bunch of I'm going to write four equations of value essentially. Um, actually, the first one is is the easiest one, and then. The, then it's a matter of just solving those equations of value. And you may want to end the video. You may want to stop watching after you, we write down the um, equations of value, or at least go to the end before you can see the final answers. Because in between just writing the equations of value down and, and getting the final answers, I'm going to do, be doing a lot of calculator work. So that'll be a little bit tedious. But uh, the main thing is to get the idea. So thinking about the, the price, the present value of the first one here, uh, thinking about this yield to maturity as a nominal annual yield, you want to divide it by two. Um, so this is the half year bond. What we really have is um, take the 1.02 here and discount it back to time zero according to this yield divided by two. So we need to take 1.02 times 1.025 take that yield, divide by 2, and add 1 to it, to the negative 1 power, we've got one half year that's gone by. Uh, that will be the present value, the price of the first bond, and that should equal uh, the present value of that same bond according to the term structure. And again, the term structure is going to be a list of numbers, R.5, R1, R1.5, and R2, these are the things that we want to find as nominal annual uh, yields, you could call them. Spot rates is the more official name here. So according to whatever, we want to find these numbers in such a way that the present values here are the same. So I want this to equal 1.02 times 1 plus r.5 divided by 2 to the negative 1 power. And that's a really easy equation to solve. The 1.02s are the same. Negative 1 powers are the same. This whole thing, 1 plus r.5 over 2, has to equal 1.025, which means, very simply, r.5 is the same as the original yield to matur maturity here. r.5 is going to be the same as the yield to maturity of the half year one. That shouldn't be very surprising. So that is the first number that we find, and I guess I'm going ahead and solving that one right away because it's so easy. But let's now write down the equations for based a value based on the one year one and the one and a half year one, maybe I'll leave some space here, and the two year ones. In each case, we can think about the price and we can evaluate it. I won't necessarily evaluate it right away. And we can think about it in terms of these diagrams based on these yields for these coupon bonds that are, you know, the yields come from whatever the market can bear in a sense, supply and demand. So we're just observing these values. And then we want to think about the associated term structure for zero coupon bonds that would come from this. That's the, that's the goal. So thinking about, and so we want to then set it equal to some present value that comes from thinking about this term structure. So for this one, uh, for the one year bond, I look at this row, this timeline right there, and that yield to maturity. The price is going to be, okay, let's go ahead and write, write it using um, a notation, the, the present value notation of annuity immediates. So I could write this as 0 0.03 times A2. Uh, the yield to maturity is, um, as a nominal annual rate, is 10%. Divide that by 2 to get the effective semi-annual one. So I'd have a 0 0.05 there. Plus the redemption amount of 1 times uh, V to the second power. So that will be 1.05 to the negative 2 power. I could put a 1 times in front of it, but I won't have to. That'll be a nice thing about taking the redemption value to be 1. So that is going to be the price. Let me not evaluate that right now, but that's got to equal, based on the term structure, um, let's see here, 0 0.03. I'll use it right using A notation as well. No, actually, that's not going to be the case. I don't want to do that because the terms, these numbers don't necessarily stay the same. So I actually do want to write it in terms of an actual summation here. 
1 plus point, r.5 point divided by 2 to the negative 1. I already know r.5 is 0 0.05, so I can write this. And then I have also the 0 0.03 and the 1 at time 1. Let me just go ahead and lump those together as a 1.03 times 1 plus r sub 1 over 2 to the negative 2. So r1 is the next unknown value that I want to solve for, the next nominal annual rate for zero coupon bonds of term one year that I'm going to solve for, and this is the equation of value that I need to solve for it. Okay, I'm not going to actually do the solving right now. For the one and a half years, when you look at this number line, you've got the coupons being 0 0.02, you've got three payments of those, so you have A3, you have a yield maturity as a nominal annual rate of 0.15, so as an effective semi-annual rate it would be 0 0.075, and then we'd have 1 times 1 plus 0 0.075 to the negative 3 power, 3 periods there. And that should equal the same thing here. I'll just use arrows to save time. Plus, um, let's see, yeah, plus point, excuse me, it'd be 0 0.02. Got to be careful not to make mistakes because we have the 0 0.02s here instead of 0 0.03. This part would be what goes in here. Then we'd have plus 0 0.02 times 1 plus r1 over 2 to the negative 2 power, or r1 we found from the previous one. Then we'd have a plus 1.02, the final payment at time 1.5, times 1 plus r sub 1.5 over 2 to the negative 3 power. So we, found our, we find r1 from this equation, plug it in there, then we can use this equation to find R1.5. And I hope you see the pattern now and could predict pretty quickly what this last equation is going to look like. So the coupon payments are 0 0.04, so I'd have 0 0.04 A4. The yield to maturity as a nominal annual rate is 15%, so I'm going to again, again, again have a 0 0.075 here, sorry. And then I'm going to have a plus 1.075 to the negative 4 power. And then I'm going to get equals, so again, those coupon payments are 0.04. I'll have a 0.04 times the same thing that was here based on the 0.05 right there, plus a 0.04 times the same thing that I get right here, plus a 0.04 times the same thing that I get right here. Finally, plus, at the end, I got a 1.04, 1 1.04 times 1 plus r2 over 2 to the negative 4 power. Okay, so I would again, I'd find r1 and r2, excuse me, r point, got r, r.5, find r1, find r1.5, ultimately find r2, and once I found all four of those, then I'm done with the problem. So now comes the calculator work. So this is the point where you may want to skip to the end. Hopefully I don't make too many mistakes along the way, but in case you're feeling like you want to see the calculator work done, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway here as quick as I can. So let me focus first on finding the price there. So find A2 here is first 1.05. It's reciprocal is V. I need to square that. Subtract from 1. Oops. I made a mistake already. Okay, 1.05 reciprocal square subtract from 1, divide by 0 0.05, that's A times 0 0.03, that's this thing, and go ahead and store that, and register 1, 1 1.05 to the negative 2, plus what's in register 1, looks like this thing here is 0 0.96281179, Oh, let's store that in register 7. I'm going to store the, the values here in register 789. Put a little 7 here. And um, actually, let me calculate these present values right away, and then we'll do the algebra work later. So let's go into this next present value. So I have 1.075 uh, to the negative 3 power, or take its reciprocal and qubit. 3 power, subtract from 1, divide by 0 0.075, that's A, times 0 0.02, let's store that now in register 1, 1.075 to the negative 3, 
is this plus what's in register one. That's about then 0 0.85697108. I'll store that in register eight. Store that in register eight. Let's go on to this one. 1.075 to the negative four power, subtract from one, divide by 0 0.075, that's A, times 0 0.04, store that in register one. Okay, then take 1.075 to the negative four, add to what's in register one. This looks to be then 0.8827. 7358. A little tough to see there. Two, there's two eights there and two sevens. I'll store that in register nine. All right, now I'm ready to do some algebra. Um, let's figure, well, okay, not quite. Let's figure this out here. So this is 1.025 reciprocal times 0.03. Um, let me go ahead and write it down just in case I need it. 0 0.029 and I guess if I divide that by 0 0.03 to get back to this thing, I'm going to need that again. Maybe I should store that somewhere. Store that in register 4 maybe. That's going to be this thing right there in register 4. All right, um, I'm wanting to solve for R1. So we need to take the 0 0.029, go back to times 0 0.03, and subtract it from what's in register seven, the negative sign, and then add it to what's in register seven. Looks good. Then we need to divide that by 1.03, and then raise it to the negative one half power to get rid of that negative two there negative 0.5 power, subtract one, looks like R1 over two is 0 0.050391812, and therefore R2, R1 itself times two is 0 0.1007836.5. Let me double check that that is right, that is right. My one zero zero seven eight three six five. Looking at my answer key, that is correct. That that's good. Okay. Um, well, let me store this thing that we will reuse there in register five. So I'll go back to dividing this by two. There's no real efficient way to do this. Add one to that and raise it to the negative two power. That's what this thing is right there. Let me store that in register five. Yikes. So easy to make a mistake here. Hopefully this is not an actual exam problem. No, it's not, but it's important for understanding things. All right, now we want to take what's in register four here and multiply it by 0 0.02. Recall four times 0 0.02. Subtract that from what's in register eight. Negative plus recall eight. Uh, we also want to subtract, oh boy, uh, this thing times 0 0.02. Uh, yikes. Um, have I used register zero yet? I don't think I've used register zero. So I've done the subtracting of this store in register zero. Take what's in register five times 0 0.02, subtract it from what's in register zero. So now I now divide by 1.02. I'm just trying to solve for R1.5 here. Divide by 1.02. And then raise to the negative one third power or take its reciprocal and raise to the positive one third power and subtract one and believe it or not, this looks correct. Yes, it is amazing. For R1.5 over two, R1.5 over two is about, sorry, I have to write so small here, 0 0.075755 and one nine. I multiply that by two. 
R1.5 is 0 0.15151 approximately. Hang on while I log into my computer. Sorry about that. Um, and that is correct. Looking again in my answer key. Yes, this is amazingly correct. So far, so good. Now we have one more thing to do. Uh, okay, this one here. So take what's in register 4 times 0 0.04. What's in register 4 times 0 0.04. Subtract that from what's in register 9. Let's store that in register 0. Then I want to take 0 0.04 times, what was this, in register 5. Call 5 times 0 0.04. Subtract that from what's in register zero, and now store that in register zero. Then take this R1.5 divided, divided by two, add one to the negative three power. That's what's gonna go here before multiplying by 0 0.04. So let's just go ahead and type it in 0 0.075755, and I think it was a one nine, because I'm looking right there. Uh, plus one to the negative three power times 0 0.04. Subtract that from what's in register zero and get this. Now I want to solve for R2 by first dividing both sides by 1.04. Uh, now raise both sides to the negative one fourth power. Subtract 1. Is this R2 over 2? Looking at my answer key. Yes, amazingly it is. This I haven't made a mistake. R2 over 2 is 0 0.07617245. And then R2 itself is this times 2. 0.15234489. And now for the final answers. Uh, that I'll do in green. I will write them down and for people who've skipped ahead you can see the final answers. So the term structure here that we found for zero coupon bonds so R.5 is 0 0.05, R1 is 0 0.1007836, R1.5 I'm looking here and then now here and finally here is 0 0.15151037, and of course you'd probably want to round these. And R2 is 0.15234489, and if you round them, you'll get the answers that are in the back of the book and the answer key. And wow, that was amazing. If you skipped over this, there was a, an amazing tour de force of calculator usage and storage that, like the numbers you see here, 7, 8, 9, where these registers are storing things in. There's a 4, there's a 5. So it was kind of a crazy thing, it took a while. Um, but for those who could stand, stand that, uh, hopefully you got a lot of ideas about calculator usage too.